I'll be the one to take the risk to go and get them bands. I'll be the one to never sit and go and make a plan. Knowing my mother getting old and I don't got no time. Gotta keep a couple for the road, the rest get left behind. Yeah. To the hundreds, pledge allegiance, I stand. I'm going to pull four in the fucking white sand. I give it all to the okay, fucking okay. mic stand. If it's been done before, then I know I can. Mm-hmm. I'm on the rise, I'm trying to keep Yo, it Yo, what's the deal, here. y'all? Yo. Hope all is well. Welcome back to another episode. I'm Duke. I'm Omar. I'm Jalan. And this is nice and neat. And I'm excited for this episode. We got yes, a fun sir. one coming for y'all today. It's a good one. It's a good one. It's actually going to really speak to y'all currently right now. But it's going to speak to all of us because all of us have been in this situation before. You know, we're going to be talking about, you know, just just what it looks like to live with someone of the opposite sex. So your partner, your ladies, what it looked like. I, I used to live with someone before and it was incredible. It was incredible. We had an incredible understanding. Um, but I also learned a lot of things as well. I learned how I could have made her life a little bit more difficult, mm-hmm. you know, and- um, Wait, how you could have made her life more difficult? Yeah, not like how I could, like I can, like I can actually do it like, yeah, but like how, the things that I was doing at the time could have made her life a little okay. bit more yeah. difficult mm-hmm. that I learned from. You know, mm-hmm. that's what we do here. We um we learn from uh, our experiences. And we share those. And we I, share those. Share those. You know, yeah. so. Yeah. Um, just use this opportunity to connect, man. A lot of you guys are probably going through the same things. So we just want to let you guys know that you're not alone. Straight you know up. what I mean? You're not Straight alone. Up. We all go through the same things. Um. So yeah, let's 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 dive in though, man. Let's dive in. Jalan, let me ask you a question. The single guy, are you gonna pick on me or yeah, yeah, I'm gonna start with We're you. gonna pick on you. We're gonna okay. warm him up. How many significant others have you lived with? Actual live with we was receiving like, mail at the same place? One. Okay. One, mm-hmm. one, one. One. Oh, you? Uh, is- <laughs> <laughs> Backfire. Wow. I'm, this is number three for me. It's number three for me. What about you, dude? And me too. Three? It's number three for two, you? Two, 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 two. I said two. two. Oh, I was like, damn. I'll put that juice on me. Three. One, two, three. three. Put that okay. juice on me. Okay. Jeez, three. Oh, my gosh. I can really speak from experience. Yeah. It's a, it's a lot of experience that you're going to give us. Yeah, you know? absolutely. A lot of do's and don'ts, I'm sure. And would you recommend living with a significant other before marriage? Are you asking me personally right now? Both of you guys. Oh, for me, it's a for, yeah for, for me. everybody. It's a, I know for us, but just well, for everybody. Speaking, yeah, for yeah, yeah. Everybody. Um, depending on the lifestyle that you live, mm. depending on the lifestyle that okay. you live, because and what what the reason why I said is because if you're somebody who you may be somebody who may not necessarily be sexually active, I, I wouldn't suggest you live with your partner if that's something that you're not trying to do until you get married. So right. no, I wouldn't suggest that. But speaking from my experiences, um. I would suggest that I would live with my partner. <laughs> uh, being in a relationship is just really, really tough, especially if you're like, yo, we're going to build. Like, we're going to build. I want to know what I'm getting myself into. I don't want to commit to to an entire future mm-hmm. before we even know what, like, our, our um, living situation even will look like mm-hmm. together. So, like, you know, just being able to see what a whole day with you looks like, being able to see you come home from a, a day, being able to what? see me, you know, shed off the world and come home and just be extremely vulnerable in that space that I call my home with you because we share it. Like, I would love you to see that. Mm-hmm. So I definitely think that that's something that's important for me. Yeah, I, I, w- I would say it's definitely important for me, too. But I would also say, like, it probably isn't really necessarily that serious if you don't. You know, right? Like, if you're not really trying to take it there, you probably m- more than comfortable staying in your place and her in her place, mm-hmm. or That's vice true. versa. You know what I'm saying? That's because true. I mean, we all know we're all men here. Um, you know, and we're very aware of, w- of what goes on, you know, in life. And you know, anytime that you know you don't have to necessarily check in with your partner or, or answer to things that are immediate right then and there it's easy for you to escape those things right you know what i'm saying when you don't live with that person right. you know what i'm saying so for me you know it's it's it's, it's an easy answer and i would definitely say yes you know if it's something that you really want to build on you see a real future in you know that, that that's where it's at i mean what else are we doing so I'm, other, than, other than that i'm living a separate life and you you live in a separate right. life too I'm, I'm gonna pick on all a little bit here i'm gonna pick, on, ahead, all a little bit. pick yeah. on me then so you know oh you know you did it three different times 
Um, I'm going to ask you. I'm going to ask you this question, but I want you to answer it um, each individual time differently. Okay. And then And then moving forward, mm -hmm. right? So when do and when did you know it was time? Yeah, well, my first situation was coming out off of a relationship out of college, you know, okay. and I have been dating this woman on and off for about five years, you know. So we enter the, you know, basically we enter the NFL together. <laughs> Right, right, we got drafted. And we, we got drafted. We got drafted. Yeah. You know, and it was, I felt obligated. It was kind of one of those situations. Okay. Like, yo, I just I, I got some bread. Like, what I look like? You gotta you, do right by her for at least I, a year. I gotta at least do right. You know what I look like? You coming out here living and not living with me? Right, I, right. Because we're both in yeah. Denver. We're both of us are from Southern California. So for you to come out to Denver, Colorado, to live in an apartment separate of me. It just looked full gazy, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, you know, on top of I that, did that shit too before. Uh, see, you you crazy. Looks nuts. It, he's a wild boy. But on top of that, you know, this woman had been holding me down. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and at, at the time, pre league, pre league, pre league. Mm -hmm. And at the time, at the to be completely honest, at the time, you know, I I thought that that was like where I was at. You know what I'm saying? Just looking back on, on where I was mentally. You only know what you know, bro. You only know what you know. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? And what I have what I I had experienced, you know. So uh, for us in that in that particular situation, you know, we had been dating on and off for five years. It just seemed appropriate at the time, you know. Let's fast forward. That situation ended up fizzling out. One. That's one, right? Okay. Let, let's move on to my second situation of me living with a woman. You know, I, I definitely think I made that decision prematurely. You know, her current situation. Um, you know, when we were when we first started off dating, she didn't really have her her living situation all the way together, and me being me having like this room in abundance. I was just like, I knew that's the word he was going to use. <laughs> <laughs> abundance. He couldn't resist that one. <laughs> and, and, and you know, me just having you know the room and space. I was like, yo, come on, let's just let's just move on in together, you know? And um ultimately I think I think, you know, when I look back on that situation, that time in my life, I think that was way too premature. You know what I'm saying? We definitely weren't ready for that. We How had, soon was that? Because the first one you told us was a five year relationship. Yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. I mean I had started seeing this girl we established a relationship like at the Super Bowl. That was in February. By May she was living with me. Way too fast. Three months. Yeah. Way Still too. Still in that infatuation stage. In the honeymoon yep. stage. I'm okay. like, fuck it. I'm living in Denver. It's all good. It's it's, the this is the best thing rolling right it's now. It's the best thing rolling for me right now. I'm yep. comfortable. I'm good with it. You know? And, you know, when I look back on it, you know, it was definitely a mistake. You know, if I could go back and rewind, rewind the, the hands of time, I would definitely do it differently. You know? Um, but it was a learning experience, you know, nonetheless. You know? Um, and, uh, you know, I've obviously... Uh, made sure that, you know, I didn't make the same mistakes moving forward, you know, with my current situation with, with that being Candace, you know. With Candace, we were dating for two and a half years before we decided to move in together. Word. For two and a half years, strong, strong, strong. And and what really, what really, you know, forced the hand is that it got to the point where it was like, yo, I'm either over your house three, four times a week or you're over my house three, four times a week, you know. So what it looks like is, you're paying rent for nothing or I'm paying rent for nothing. You know, we always spend a lot of time to, together. We enjoy each other's company. You know, at what point do we say, you know, the time is now? And when we go back to thinking about, you know, before you get married with, with someone, you know, it was like, we both think that we want to get married. You know, we're at a time we're both in our later 20s, approaching our 30s. Now might be the appropriate time to kind of take that that step and that, you know, I guess that chance to see if, if this is really what it's supposed to be, mm -hmm. you know? So um, thus far I've made the right decision. You know, we haven't had any issues, you know, but I've also a more mature man, you know, at this point in my life, you know what I'm saying? At that point, I, I was just doing what I felt was right, not what was necessarily right. You know what I'm saying? At this point in my life, I know this is the right thing to do. Then I ain't had enough experience, you know? You know, the older old looking back at that old now is like dummy. You know <laughs> mm -hmm. what you doing? Mm -hmm. You know you, you moving too fast. You need to you need to actually think about what you're doing. But then in the moment, you know some things you just don't be thinking about. You know, just be out here trying to live, have a good time. You know, you feel like you're doing what's right. You know, and you know that that's that's what it was. But obviously, neither one of those situ situations worked out for me. So you've been through that, right? You, you was experienced, yep. right? What are, and you one time, me twice, right? Mm -hmm. What are, let's talk about the rules and expectations 
for your significant other when you're living with the significant other? Well, what? the the prior before like living, you guys got to have that conversation, mm, right? right? And I, right, I kind of right, think right. that was some for old second relationship mm -hmm. that probably necessarily missed over. Yeah, missed over. he kind of like sure. that conversation. Yeah, that conversation is just like, hey, so you know, um, you know, we spending this much time together, as he said, within him and Candace's relationship, we spending this much time together. You know, I think it'll make more sense for us to just live together, right? When you have that conversation, then the conversation of the financials, be, it opens up for that yeah. to where now it's going to be like, what can we afford together? Right, right, right. What are what are you looking for? Right. And by spending that amount of time together with each other, you guys spend a night at each other's house. You kind of get a feel for each other, how you guys live. So that's the only way it's even a, a, a thought. A thought. Yeah. Right. Because right? Right. it's like, ah, OK, I can handle that. I can handle this. OK, for sure. Obviously, when you get when you move with somebody, you're going to really get the full experience. But that's like a good teaser. It's a good trailer. Mm -hmm. right. So you have that conversation of, you know, just like the financials. Then you have that conversation of what is expected from the financials. Mm -hmm. Right. So where are your financials going? Where am I going? So, you know, before you move in together, you guys have those like rent conversations and those grocery conversations. Right. And, you know, um, if you have home insurance, those home insurance conversations and like who's paying for that and, you know, what like certain things look like. I had those conversations really early when I did when I did uh, my move in. Um, that was kind of based off of when we were dating this was with my my last girlfriend. When we were dating, she was living at home with her parents and I had my own place. Mm. So she was at my crib like every day. She had my crib every day. And I had a roommate at the time. So at the time I got a roommate, she's at my crib every day. And we're just like, hey, yo, like we 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 need our own space. We need our own space. You know, not necessarily, hey, I I, I want to move out from a roommate. I was very comfortable. Cool. <laughs> that was cool. It was cool. 24 years old. Was very comfortable. Oh, you're good. Yeah, I was good. Yeah. You know, so um, we started spending so much time. It was like, yo, we need our own space. So yeah. now we have the conversation of actually like financials, right? Um, Within having the conversation, I was able to see, I'm, so, I'm, I'm assuming like you guys, certain things that you didn't, that you didn't like within that, that, that space that you guys are now thinking about moving in with each other. Cause now you're paying attention on a whole different level, right? Like paying attention to pet peeves, paying mm -hmm. attention to certain things like, ah, yeah. could I, could I really do this? Yeah. You know, to where even like, I would do little things like, I, I'll tell you some of the things I'll do, right? I'll do things like I will wash, I leave my clothes on the bed, she'll be in the room and I go in the other room and watch TV, <laughs> all right? You expecting her to fold them? I wanted to see what was gonna happen. Not necessarily the expectation. I just wanted to see what's I gonna happen. See. I want to see. I come back, it be folded. I'm like, oh, she really trying to do this moving thing. Okay. Like, oh, okay, okay, for sure. So that was within the conversation of the expectations as well. Who gonna wash? Right. Who's gonna wash? I actually enjoy washing my own clothes, so it's right. not really a, a problem for me. But that was a conversation as well. Right. You know. So I mean, Duke, you did this twice. You did it twice. You're currently in one. You did one before. Do you feel like you rushed the first one, or you feel like the first one was exactly what it was supposed to be? Yeah, I feel like I rushed the. I feel like I rushed the first one, but I also feel like I had the luxury too, right? I feel like I had the means too, mm -hmm. and I felt like I was in the space where it's like, yo, like YOLO, you know YOLO. It was like, yo, I'm young, and if it don't work, it don't work, and if it do, it do. You know what I'm saying? And um, when you playing ball, you want that companionship that 24-7 companionship because wherever you're playing, it could be lonely. Absolutely. You know what I mean? So, the um, long, long time ago, long time ago, many moves. Ago. Many, many moves. <laughs> but <laughs> but um, I met her in college, so I knew her for like, oh, like four years, five mm -hmm. years, right? And then we-, we Dorm days. Dorm days. We mm -hmm. reconnected once I got to the NFL. Um, but for me, bro, it was- um. You know, it, for me, it was just like too early. I mean, it was just like I didn't, I was young. Like I just moved her in, just thinking that like, yo, like I can handle this. It's nothing. But like now, compared to where I am now, it, it's like night and day. I felt like I wasn't even like selfless, right? I was super selfish. It was all about me and what I wanted. And um, 
there's so many things I didn't in that relationship where I'm like, yo, I was tripping. Like I was doing shit like we trained in the off season in LA, right? We trained in the off season in LA. She came to live in Denver with me and I came back to LA to train and she stayed in Denver. But not knowing nobody there. Where's she from originally? She's from the Bay Area. She was from the Bay Area. But what are you supposed to do? In that situation? All, all I'm saying is, all I'm saying is, now. That's not what he would do. Now, yeah. I would be much more like, all right, baby, what are we doing? Mm -hmm. Right. How we, like, we're living together. Like, I'm living with Chanel, right? I'm like, yo, okay, babe, what are we doing? And not just being like, ah, uh, she'll figure that out. You know what I mean? So, um, so yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> hey well i mean I'm, I'm happy that you're so much more selfless now and that i think that is actually um why we do it's like a microcosm of what we do here in the show you know you experience it and you learn from your experiences so all you can do is grow from your experiences and before oh buzz me i'm gonna beat up to the boys <laughs> <laughs> That's right, you guessed it. Uh, what's the deal, y'all? Welcome back to the Nice and Neat Halftime Show. I'm your host, Omar. Um, and as always, you know, we want to take this opportunity, this space, um, this moment to talk about things that, you know, we got going on here at the show. Um, and right now, you know, we definitely want to highlight Jalan's masterclass, which is now out and available. Um, it's called Create Gold, and it's a masterclass um, centered around learning how to establish a brick and mortar establishment. All right. So this dude is giving you all his tips on entrepreneurship, how to start a business, how to get it going. And um, this is more so in the biz and the grooming um industry right space, yep. in the grooming space right so definitely tap in with that also also man or woman if you're looking to keep your hair proper your edges fresh for the summertime we know it's summer everybody want to be fine and all that tap in with the comarstore.com to get your couple sets of, of bonnets and do-rags that's right we got matching um sets for men and women and they're also available in kid sizes so you definitely don't want to miss out on that because it's never a bad time to take care of your hair with that said i want to get into the halftime game it's called dim the rules okay? dim the rules dim the rules so we, we briefly you know um explain on last episode about you know what's going on dim the rules is basically a question um geared towards the culture you know we'll answer it and give you the rules on that question. All right. So them the rule. Duke, what we got today? All right, fellas. All right. So we got um a good one. We've all we've all dealt with this. And this is like a little bit of a, a sticky situation. Sticky. If I may say. All right, I got a question for y'all. And I need to know what the rules are. All right. If you are in a relationship and you and your girl or man are out, and you see your ex at the same place. Yikes. Yikes. All right. Do you mention it at all to your girl? Immediately. Now, this is someone <laughs> we really dated. It's your ex. This is someone, your ex. This your is ex. someone your ex. you lived with. Oh. <laughs> this is someone we you lived with. What'd you say? Immediately. With a G? Yeah. yeah. Immediately. Got Immediately. to. Immediately. Got to. You got to grab your partner by the arm, mm -hmm. by the hand, pull her aside. Whisper in the ear, hey, just so you know, yeah, I mean, it's kind of awkward and all that, but I see, you know, my old thing in here, and I just want you to be aware in case we mm -hmm. run into her later on, later tonight. Okay, so just in case you run into her, right? Just in case. Just or in just care. in case she ends up at the bar with the girls. Mm. Yeah. And the girls get the, Come on. You, you know girls, you girls know how girls be. Right, Instagram right. and changing, exchanging Instagram, kicking and, kicking kicking and, and shit. Yep. Nah, no, just, just so we And vice it. versa, and vice versa. Ladies, I'm gonna tell you like, when it comes to, when it comes to men, your man never wants to feel like you chose the comfort of another man over him. Word. I you, actually feel like you chose him. Yeah, I just feel like you chose him. You yeah. gotta give me the heads up. So he not thinking that he knows something that I don't know. Right, right, right. You know, you know the the, the pull the quick pull aside for the full disclosure later is is nothing wrong with that. It's just okay. fine. Nah, dim, dim the, the rules. rules. Dim the rules. <laughs> okay, All right. okay. All right, now hold on, hold on, hold on now. All right, same situation, right? You're in a relationship with your girl out, see your ex at, at a place. Do you speak to them at all? Your ex? Is there any? <laughs> oh, reason? this is my girl. I'm with. 
you are with your girl. Oh, no nah. way. I got to no let way. her know how is strong this new foundation is. Is there any situation that's going to call for y'all to speak at all? The only situation that causes for you to speak is if she is so out of pocket that she decides to come and say hi to you and her. Right. Mm -hmm. At that point, you have to say hi because you're not you're not a disrespectful individual. Right. You're not just going to ignore nobody in front of your girl. Faith. I mean, right. you could. But, but your girl will want that, though. Right? Your girl will want that. Nah, but that's also why you disclose that information Beforehand. as soon as you walk yep. in. Yep. So now if she does do that. Oh, baby, already know. She already know what time it is. Like, you're not getting the fast one over on my girl. Now, my girl, yeah. I already told my nah, girl. Not my girl. Uh -uh. And that's why you don't, you don't wait is. till you get home. Like, hey, by the way, when we were there earlier, mm. you know, um, that was my. Nah. Why already, don't you do that? Because when you get home, first and foremost, you're subconsciously protecting the other person when you do that. Now you seem sneaky. You seem sneaky. Let's say they had a conversation and they exchanged social media. Now I got to unfollow her and be messy because you didn't tell me something you could have told me. Mm -hmm. or I got to unfollow this dude and be messy because you waited till we got to the crib to tell me. Okay. Like, nah, you you seen it. Like, just say something. Okay. Oh, I didn't know how you was going to react. Like, you with me, though. All right. It's all, all right. good. Okay, cool. All right, so same scenario. This girl is someone that was like a one-off. Not it. Let's say not even one-off. There's someone you use like dealing with really casually, but no one knows. No one knows. No one knows. Is she is she right? connected any any way to the circle? No. Nope. To my girl circle? No. Nope. Nah, we don't have to talk about that. No. Nah. We don't gotta talk about we that. We don't have to talk about that. Mm -mm. We don't have to talk about that because there's really no way for that to get back to her. And we don't we not we don't well, I would hope that we're not in a relationship where I have to just share everything. 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 No everything. Okay. Like that's like like us fellas, like we don't want to know everything about our woman. Right, right. Some of those things would, would actually everything. turn us off. Right, right, You know what I'm saying? If we knew everything. Some of those things would definitely disturb our peace. You feel what I'm saying? No. So no. Uh, just being men, we'd just be like, I'd rather just not know. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But I think the same thing goes for them too. Yeah. Like they don't need to know everything. I think I think what what falls under the underneath those guidelines mm -hmm. are the situations that were somewhat serious you know i saw this person frequently we had an ongoing thing okay now i got to disclose this information with you but if it was just one of them one-offs things and we all victims to one-offs you know what i'm saying then what's it what, what, see because <laughs> see cause, look, 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 what's look, a one-off what's a one-off because how you gonna take it there because what's a know, one off because some because some women because some women will be like yeah we we messed around a couple of times but it wasn't like that so i didn't need to say nothing but it's like Three or four times ain't a one off. Yeah, man. but I I would say I would say if that person is not connected to your girl in any way, that's still considered a one off. You know what I'm saying? Because at, at no point am I uh weary of my girl having the the women conversation at the bar. Cause I just know y'all not gonna be connected. So like I don't even need to disturb your peace. By telling you this, right? You kind of understand, like you're not even y'all not even in the same circle, not even the same like class. space, class, class, class. 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 Wow, that's a good class. one. No, no. I don't even want to embarrass you by telling you that yeah. that was a one off. Look, you're gonna be clowning me. Yeah, you could be clowning me for telling you that. You, you feel what I'm saying? <laughs> and vice versa. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Really, Chuck? Nah, but um, yeah, <laughs> Chuck. <laughs> uh, with that said, dim the rules. Dim, dim, the, dim rules. the rules. Dim the rules. Dim the rules. Dim the rules. It was all the questions we had for dinner yeah, rules. Shit. Well, well, with that said, you know we're gonna conclude this halftime show, um, and, and um, just like we do any other episode, we're gonna send you guys off with some positive energy, some positive vibrations, and a smile. Of course, we're gonna get into the second half. Let's go, man. So you know, I, I kind of briefly touched on it in the first half, but I actually want to get into it. Something that I was able to pick up while dating uh, my partner before we moved in with each other was a couple of things I just didn't like, like pet peeves. And I was like, okay, because, oh, you know, a pet peeve is something that every time you see it, it's going to bother you. Every time you hear it, it's going to bother you. Every time you smell it, experience it, it's going to bother you. Mm. So how do you, like, get around it? I'll tell you my pet peeve. It may be small to y'all. Huge to me. <laughs> Huge. <laughs> Huge. Right? One morning, I was brushing my teeth. I wake up, I was brushing my teeth. I looked at my... My toothpaste and it was like really disconfigured. Like it was like 
look like every single finger just just squeezed, squeezed it, it and, right and it, it made me create the word squoze because it was like the past tense of squeezed like squoze yeah it's squoze it's squoze you know so it was real squoze right it was, it was like a gogurt it was crazy i don't wow. i don't do that with, wow i don't do that with my toothpaste uh-huh. i'm a bottom puller upper that's just what it is, right? I'm really neat with my toothpaste. <laughs> I'm a bottom pull you know? upper. As it gets more, as it, as more comes out, I even roll it, you know, because I don't. I want to keep the fullness. You're of trying it. to get every inch of that toothpaste. I've, I I I grew up a little broke. You sound you like the, you sound like the person who used the the. the the very end of the bar soap. See, you know what I'm talking if about? I like, use, if I like use bar this. soap, you sound like I that be guy. There. Should be like this. Right. <laughs> you be really so like see, this. that's what it sound like. You guys sound like tube squeezers. I'm not a tube squeezer. That's what y'all sound like. Okay. So I know I know that Duke's a tube squeezer by how he drinks water bottles. So <laughs> so I woke up in one morning. This is before we were living together. I seen that I, my my tube was squeezed, and I was like, "Okay, I, I don't really like that. Let me make sure that it was not me. It was her." So I woke up the next morning after we spent a night because you know we're doing this consecutive night thing. You know, by the way, fellas, I just want to give you a heads up. If you're spending consecutive nights with a woman and she's like, "Hey, so what are we?" Don't be shocked. Like, don't be shocked when you guys start Facts. having those conversations. Facts. That you, you're selling dreams at that point if you don't think like that's yeah. where she's kind of expecting Whether the you relationship think you're in the business to go. Or not. Exactly. <laughs> so that's just a quick sidebar. Different rules. So, anyways. Woke up the next morning, I seen that my toothpaste was squozing again, right? You see how it's squozing. You see that? Wow. Okay. You you were squozing in the past tense. Shouldn't it? Wow. Shouldn't it be a word? I thought squoze was already a past tense. He used squozing. So the toothpaste uh, was there again. So I said, you know what? Instead of me just getting frustrated, why don't I just buy another toothpaste and it just be mine and this be hers? So when we finally moved in together, we didn't share toothpaste. I never was upset about it. I didn't even realize that's what she did anymore because I don't use that toothpaste. I got my own toothpaste. And bathroom space is really important as yes, well. But I want to hear about some of y'all pet peeves. I want to hear about not only not only what gets you mad about your girl, Duke, but what bothers her that you do. I know for a fact... I drink water bottles and keep them on the counter and just leave them on the counter. And sometimes I think one thing, so I use, I use um, plastic bowls, right? Cause I don't be wanting to watch this. So we use plastic wow. bowls, st- styrofoam bowls. And nigga lazy. lazy. Right? So we be running out the house in the morning. So we'll make oatmeal, right? And I'll make oatmeal and I'll be running out the house. Cause I'll be trying to just get to the gym quick. I'll throw the shit in the sink. No. I'll throw the shit in the sink. She'd be like, yo, babe. Are you throwing plastic forks in the sink? I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, babe. So I know, I know for a fact she hates that. Me on the other hand, she leaves the lights on. Oh. She, she she leaves the lights on and I'll tell her about it and she's like, I didn't do that. You grew up in a black house, boy. She, she leaves the lights <laughs> on and i say, yo, babe, you, leave, you left the lights on. She was like, no, I didn't. It's your closet. I don't go in there. So those things are like, you know, like, all right, man. You know what I'm saying? But one thing she doesn't do that I used to get irritated about is like seeing hair all over the like, bathroom. Mm. And she doesn't do she that. She don't do it. Well, and I was love like, that. You love that. Oh, shit. And I told her about that one time. I never see hair in the bathroom. Mm-hmm. I see hair on, like, on the walls. And that shit was irritating. And that was like a pet peeve of mine that just made me I can't oh. live with you. I don't th- live with you no more. Oh, that's a pet peeve of mine too. Like the dirty sink with the makeup and the hair all over the place. Yeah, that's trash. I I would say for me personally though. um, I'm sorry, one more. Oh, go ahead. Get it off. Get it off. This is your space. This is your space, bro. Yeah. Please. Do your thing. Please. The bed. You know how we. I know. I know. To any listeners in here, (laughs) I know. know. Or people watching, Omar and I used to live with each other, right? We sleep with each other. So the standard of like cleanliness, cleanliness. was like godly, right? Right next to And it to was like it. almost like military like, right? Because we wake up in the morning and it was just like a comp- competition of like who could keep their shit the cleanest, right? Yep. So when I get out of bed, I make my bed and I make sure all the edges are tucked. Nice and Everything tight. Everything is tight. Nice, nice and, and neat. neat. Nice and neat. Everything is tight. So it's not like just all, it's just not moving all the pl- all, everywhere, right? And, um, you know, obviously, I get out the bed now before Chanel does, right? And 
she's just in the bed. When she gets out, probably like an hour after me, and she makes the bed, right? But when she makes the bed, she just like, like throws the blanket like, over like, it, like like a um, like a Aladdin's carpet, mm-hmm. <laughs> like like damn near that she could be however it needs to be underneath. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She just, as long as that comfort, as long as that comfort right, is straight. Yo, so she kind of just like throws them in the bed, and like I've not, I don't say anything about it anymore. But I was like, damn, like why you just don't tuck it? Why you just don't tuck it? And um, you know, she said obviously her nails, she don't mess with her nails, but like that was my pet peeve. It's like, yo, like that's not how the bed should be. Mm. It was like, yo, I'm getting out of the bed anyway. So See, yeah. I I think that was kind of very similar to like my toothpaste one. Like, that just now becomes your job. Yeah. And I know you leave before. I know you leave the house before, right. but that's just your you gotta figure right. you gotta make time for that. It's not like, even important. Yeah, it's like not even it's important. just that's just one of those things where you're like, okay, that I'm stronger at that than she is, and yeah. it's okay because she's stronger at things than I am. Right, right, right. So I'm sure that. she doesn't leave oatmeal in the sink. Mm-hmm. Right, right, right. You know. So, so. <laughs> so. what about you, O? Um, well, I, I just wanna wanna say that uh, my girl doesn't make the bed up either. So, babe, I hate to put you down, but <laughs> it sounded like a moment that that's what we was doing. <laughs> 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 wow, this was crazy. Wow, uh, I love you, babe. I love you. But um, yeah, I, I think one of my pet peeves is um, I'm I'm a cereal eater. Okay, I love my cereal. Not I love a, not a cereal eater, but the actual cereal. A cereal. Yeah, like I love I like cereal, cereal so much. Killing food. I didn't know if there yeah. were S on the internet thing like cereals. Like I love my cereals. You know what I'm saying? Like, I love it that much, right? And um, you know um, my girl is one of those girls who uh. She doesn't want anything until I got something. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, your girl's one of those girls that's all girls. Okay, got gotcha. you. Oh, Keep going. oh Keep going. my bad. Gotcha. That's yeah. right. That's right. Right. <laughs> Do you want anything from the kitchen? Now nah, I'm good. All right, I come back with a bowl of cereal. Now you want a bite. Okay, this is one thing I don't play with. I'm not sharing my cereal, right? That little little bit of milk that's dripping off your lip back into the bowl. Yeah. Now nah, that's got to have to be for your own personal bowl. You got a personal bowl. You know, don't try to kind of come over here and enjoy my bowl. So that's definitely one of my pet peeves. And I and I'm for certain that one of my girls' pet peeves of mine is um I'm an early riser. I get up about six AM every day. And uh my girl, you know, she gets her beauty sleep, to say the least. And uh <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, sometimes I need a new towel or I'm taking a shower or whatever the deal is, and I gotta open up a cabinet. I have a bad habit of just like carelessly letting the cabinets close, you know, early in the morning. And sometimes that leads to things slamming. So my girl's constantly on my head, on my, really at my neck um, about being more considerate in the morning. And for whatever reason, I just can't remember. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if you guys have that issue of not remembering with your girl, but that, that kind of happens to me all the time. So my pet peeve is, you know, I don't like sharing my cereal. She constantly asking me to share the cereal. And hers would definitely be me being a little more considerate with noise and, and sound in the morning. Uh-huh. So, the morning. so each one of y'all pet peeves did did not only you know, but did your partners know each other's pet peeves prior to living with each other? That wasn't, this was something that was kind of discovered after living with each other. Yeah, this wasn't something that we discussed. I don't think pet peeves are something that you like open, yeah, yeah open endedly like discuss about, you know? Like or recognize, right? Or recognize. You're not around right. each other yeah. enough to recognize. Right. And like, like I have to actually think about what I don't like, right? Like it has to just happen. Feel like, oh, I don't like that. I was gonna say sometimes right. you almost it almost needs to happen right. to you to to understand right. that like, you don't like I don't it. Like that. Yeah, you know what I'm saying so. It doesn't happen often though. I be in one hundred with y'all. Like living with somebody was one of the funnest times of my life. Like living with living with my partner. Your, your other, yeah, yeah. Like it was one of the. And I think I think whenever I decide to do it again, it's gonna be equally as fun. Yeah. Because I'm not living with someone who I don't enjoy spending time with, who I don't enjoy being with. Um, just making a decision to live with someone shouldn't be a decision to where you even look at it as it can be a potential burden. If you feel like it's a burden, it's not something that you should be doing. Agreed. You know, um, I while while we lived together, it felt like having a slumber party every single night with your homie. Like that's just what it feels like, you know. And when you are enjoying someone's space so much, even I've even 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 dating, right? I've just enjoyed someone's space so much to where it's just like. Oh man, I'm not even ready to go to sleep right now. And that is almost how you want it to be with your partner. So, you know, it's not it's not a uh 
I got to go home. Damn. I got to go home, right? I did want to talk to you guys about the aspect of, you know, the, and unfortunately it happens when you guys have, you know, disagreements within your relationship. Sometimes it may happen in, um, you know, while you guys live together or while you guys don't live together. And I, one thing that I was able to pick up early on is when you guys have disagreements and you guys don't live together, you go to your place, she goes to her place. Right. It's easy. It's easy. It's you guys easy. may hit each other up tomorrow, the next day in the afternoon and it'd be dry, it'd be stale. Maybe somebody will break the ice, but it's not mandatory to break the ice. Mm -mm. But when you live with your partner, like keep in mind, I know I said I really enjoy living with my partner, but I've slept on the couch before for a night same, as well. Same. Not because I had to, but I was trying to prove a point. That's same. not how you prove a point. I've learned That's that as well. That's not the best way to go about it. You know, but... I've slept on the couch before and, you know, I know that we went to bed, we went to bed, we had a conversation, we wasn't able to to resolve the conflict in that moment. We went to sleep, we woke up, we had to see each other again immediately. So that conversation, that conflict now has to get resolved or else you feel that energy within your home and things like that. So can you guys speak to like the, the differences in those areas and what people can possibly expect and just ex just having those differences and living together and arguing and not living together and arguing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that when you when you like you said, when you don't live with someone and you argue, it's almost like, OK, well, I don't got to put up with this. Right. So. I would even say when you don't live with someone, it's easier to like go your separate ways because there's no um, urgency to try to mend things. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And then one day can turn into two days and then three days can turn into four days. And next thing you know, you ain't speak to each other for two weeks. Now it's like, oh, we don't talk no more. Mm -hmm. Right? That's, That's a possibility. Works, yeah. right? so don't, we don't talk no more. Or like, okay, well, I haven't heard from her in a week. So like, I'm about to do my own thing, you know? Um, but when you live with each other, right, you, it forces you to learn how to communicate. You know what I mean? It forces you to learn how to be mad and then get unmad, mm -hmm. right? It forces mm -hmm. you, somebody got to be the bigger person. Even when right? you don't want to be. Somebody, majority of the time, it's going to be us, yeah, right? But somebody got to be the bigger person. And it's going to show you, like, yo, like, you learn how to, like, be like, fuck, I'm not doing this shit. But then, like, fuck it, I'm doing it, yep. right? You just learn how to do it. To, 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 you know, turn that switch on because when you live with somebody and you care about, like, getting better with this person, all that matters is, like, all right, solution. You know what I mean? Solution, solution. But when you don't live with someone, it's like, yo, I'm cool with it being like this, you know? And I think that that was the biggest thing. That, well, that's one of the biggest differences between living with somebody and um, and not living with somebody as far as, like, um, arguments ago, right? But like the sleeping on the couch is gonna like that shit gonna happen. Yeah. Right. Things like um, I'm not saying it's normal, but like it happens, right? People get into arguments and be like, yo, I'm, I just need a, you know, a breather. But also, when you live with somebody, you just kind of learn how to like um, cope in different ways, mm -hmm. right? Sometimes like you learn, okay, maybe let me just take a walk, or let me just actually. Like, I never call my homies to just vent, but let me call my homies to just vent today. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it works. I'm like, oh, okay. I'm That's all I needed. I'm learning I'm learning um, different types of ways mm -hmm. to cope and help myself through the situation um, and not without having to, like, leave the relationship. You know what I mean? So I think that's one of the biggest things I learned. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of the same way. You know, I definitely agree with what, what Duke is saying on, on that end. Um, and it, it's definitely so much easier to kind of put things off when you're not living together or, you know, and like I said er, you know, earlier, I think it was before halftime, you know, like I don't even really think you're really even trying to really do the whole relationship thing if you're not really trying not to live real. with one another. So mm -hmm. when those situations arise, it's easy for you to be like, well, I'm going to hit up my other option. You know what I'm saying? Or yep. I'm, you know, yep. you know, just, just being just being completely transparent. Yep. You know what I'm saying? It's like, well, I'm not gonna deal with that. I, I know somebody else who's not gonna give me that right now. Right. You right. know what I'm saying? And I'm gonna go over here. So I, I'm glad that you say that, right? Because that brings me to the point of um, I'm gonna bring in the word intimacy, right? Do you believe that moving, like living with your partner, presents a different level of intimacy? For sure. And, and the reason why I say that is because man, I heard something really interesting within the last week. Intimacy, intimacy, into me, see, oh, into wow. me, see, right? How can you really see 
someone if you if you're not seeing someone mm -hmm. in every aspect you're not seeing them mm -hmm. you're not seeing the way they wake up you're not seeing the way they go to sleep you're not seeing the way they shut off the world you're not seeing the way they shut down that's crazy because intimacy doesn't just mean romance or, no or, you know no. It's, it's so much more you get to see them yeah the mask right. is peeled off it's like closeness closeness like, you know intimacy is like okay uh there's a it's just a certain level it's like a certain level of closeness that you know, most people will never ever get to experience, right? Because you could have like like intimate intimacy is is um is a noun, but intimate is is an adjective. So right, it's like it it it, it um describes like the type of feeling, the type of relationship that we have. We have an intimate relationship. We have a close relationship. You know what I'm saying? So, like you said, intimacy, intimacy. You see, how can you even? How can you even like? you know, get to that level without it, right? I don't know, right? I don't know. I, I, I truly believe that um, to sustain a, um, when you live with somebody, you have to be intimate. You have to have the intimacy. In, in order to have like a sustainable relationship, you know what I'm saying? Other, other than that, yeah, it definitely yeah. won't work, you know? I don't think so. Yeah, I, I'm, so, I mean, with, so, would you just just stepping out on a limb? Final thoughts on this? Would you suggest <laughs> living with your partner prior before taking the the final stage of commitment, whatever that looks like? In in a short answer, yes. Short answer, yes. Um, I'll, there's a lot of different determining factors that fall right. underneath that, but to keep it short and sweet, I I believe so. <laughs> nope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I don't think I can't even fathom it. I wouldn't even like test drive a car. I wouldn't even buy a car without test driving it. So like Come on now. I mean, that was the greatest analogy we've heard like, in three episodes. Like I wouldn't so, even I would never like I it's only way. But um that's gonna wrap us up for tonight, man. Uh appreciate you guys for tapping in with you, with us if you're listening. Um thank you for listening from wherever you are. Uh let us know what you thought. Let us know how you feel about living with your significant others. If you guys have any interesting experiences or bad experiences or good experiences, let us know. DM us. Um, and Drop it in sure the comments. To uh, get back to you. Drop it in the comments. Um, but yeah, with that said, man, I'm Duke. I'm Omar. I'm Jalan. And this is nice and neat, and that's that. I'll be the one to take the risk to go and get them bands. I'll be the one to never sit and go and make a plan. Knowing my mother getting old, now I don't got no time. Gotta keep a couple for the road, the rest get left behind. Yeah.